I know it's early, but drink another beer, maybe a shot. What's up, Terry? This is where it all happens. <laughs> well, you know, where it all happens or not. Uh, I've been a musician for over 20 years, a uh, trombone player for over 20 years. So out of that um, spawned 86 um, uh, because I w I've always been a metalhead and always wanted to play like heavy punk and metal on the guitar. So. This song is about having your heart. So we always kept everything on a positive tip. Like, like yeah, our music was never negative. Like, it had a negative feel because it was aggressive for the reason that you get frustrated in life. Simple things like the, our message is always to like practice at your feet, work your ass off. You know, like always uplifting. I got in and it was just like instantaneously. It was just a family. You know, like Ken totally took me in and. Like, I had some really hard times where I was struggling. I hadn't, didn't have enough money to eat. I didn't have enough money for drumsticks. I was just struggling to get by in this place where I really didn't know anyone. I just moved there. You know, I was working construction, just doing, like, crazy side work just to try and survive. And he'd bring me, like, uh, Big Macs from McDonald's for, like, a dollar, two dollars. He'd, he'd totally go and buy a whole bunch of cheeseburgers or whatever and bring them over to me. He'd buy drumsticks. When I didn't have any drumsticks to play, he'd, like, totally get me drumsticks and hook me up. So right away, I was like, man, these guys are just like insane. They've hardly known me for any amount of time and they're already like brothers to me. I'm Glenn Benavides. Some people call me Buddha. Everybody. <laughs> Everybody may yes. call me Buddha. Even yeah. your mom. <laughs> Even my mom. But I played bass guitar for 86. And, uh, and I, yeah, I, I sing a little. <laughs> How can you not love fucking Buddha, man? Being in a band with that guy. That guy is fucking amazing, dude. Like, the way he writes and uh, just how cool he is. I mean, I love that guy to death, dude. He's <laughs> <laughs> been fun, man. It's been fun. 86 is taking a little bit of a break, but uh, we're going to get back up. Really and you're, you're starting to write more music. I, I'm writing a lot of the music. Um, Ken's producing and writing um, and like helps me with arrangements and shit like that. And all of us do, you know, when we're sitting down together. Yeah. And then also, like, I, I write a lot of lyrics for right now, and um, I sing a lot. So before you knew it, your following would just get huge if your band rocked. I mean, shit, we play in some cities like Phoenix, Arizona, if you suck there, the, the kids turn around and sit down with their backs to you and fucking boo you with their backs. They'd sit down, you'll be playing, they'll sit down with their backs to you and boo you. So, I mean, like, we, you know... You have to learn how to fucking just not give a fuck. You're doing this for a reason. Like, music is an amazing, beautiful thing. And Music kind of like uh, technical heavy metal, and, and maybe we didn't sound as good as we thought we did. <laughs> you know? <laughs> we were very lucky, very fortunate to, like, our fourth show was opening up for the Cotton Up in the Sold Out Sunshine Theater. Wow. Our fourth show. 
It was amazing. It was one of the most amazing shows I still think I remember. Yeah. Sold out. I mean, we were so new that I don't think anybody knew who we are. They thought we were some band from <laughs> <laughs> cross country. Yeah, yeah. When you're in New Mexico, and the thing was, we were we were we kind of really got spoiled because we were so used to playing for these huge all age crowds. You know, like we played the Sunshine Theater and it'd just be going crazy. We opened for Head PE and it was like insane, you know. Yeah. And uh, that was a great show. All the crawls were great. You know, we played the launch pad. It was great. And then we come out here and it's like <laughs> nothing. Pay play. Yeah, pay to play. Fucking playing for like the sound man and the, the waitress. It's just about, you know, hard times being a musician, man. Being a musician is hard times sometimes. You know? But you come to LA and everyone sits there and goes, I already saw 10 bands this week that just sound exactly like you. And I know fucking Ozzy. Like, you know what I mean? Everybody knows somebody in LA and it's like, whatever. Like, uh, you know, it was funny actually, uh, people told us, oh, people don't mosh pit in LA. You'll never get it. You'll never see a mosh pit in LA. At least play the Coconut Teaser in that first show we had a fucking mosh pit at the Coconut Teaser. <laughs> so we're like, fuck you to LA, you know? This is out in the middle of Las Cruces on tour, just in some random place, and we start fighting. <laughs> What's this? <laughs> There's the classic thing that me and Bearhead, me and Brian, didn't get along. We got along beautifully. We're brothers, dude. We're fucking family. Yeah. But we fucking get on each other's fucking nerves. You've been sleeping <laughs> in a van for six days straight. You get sick of each other. Yeah. I had kept tapping Vito in the head all day or something. <laughs> I kept like, cause to me, me and Vito are so fucking alike, dude. We're yeah. so the same person that we just, we know exactly how to fuck with each other. Yeah. Like I know exactly what button to push with him and he knows exactly what button to push with me. It's crazy. Me and him always had an inferiority complex. Like we're always trying to beat each other's like alpha dog, you know, like the alpha male. Like I, we were always, always at each other's throats. There's nothing to learn from each other. We were like the exact same person hating on each other all day long. Yeah. You know, everybody else shared some kind of wisdom with us, and me and him couldn't offer each other anything. I'm tapping him, and next thing you know, he just fucking hauls off and fucking slugs me, dude. <laughs> we just start brawling right there in the back of the tattoo part. Ken's all, hit him! He's all fucking, hit him! <laughs> just totally instigating the whole thing, you know? And so these guys, these 420 flip guys, they're like, these guys just roll into town and they're fucking brawling. We haven't even done sound check yet. We're like brawling in the back of their tattoo shop. They're like, what the fuck is going on, right? But we made up. We're brothers, you know? And next thing you know, later, like six hours later, we're sitting there hugging, telling each other we love each other, getting drunk, you know? Total brothers, right? We don't hate each other. We just fucking love each other too much to fucking put up with each other. You know what I'm saying? Like, shit gets rowdy. The next step is just like the future, I guess, you know? Like doing new stuff. Yeah, I mean, just to start, we're starting from scratch, we're not gonna play any of the older shit, other stuff. <clears throat> so, Buddha, our bass player, is like, he's really a guitar player that plays bass, but, but he's learned how to play pretty good. And um, so he writes a lot of riffs. Oh, I'm just so stoked. It's the best shit. I mean, this is all Buddha, man. I'm telling you straight up, like, it's Buddha. Yeah. I fucking love that guy. He's fucking amazing. Like the shit that he's in, he's gonna watch this and be like, no, 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 no. <laughs> fuck, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. You're fucking badass. You know? It's like he writes, he's writing shit that's like some of the best shit that I've ever played. You know? I told that to the producer of No Effects. I told him, Sure, Pete, I sent a song to this producer for No Effects. I sent like the rough version of, uh, of Horrible Reflection to him. And uh, he's like, Well, what do you think about it? Because he hadn't heard it yet. I said, I think it's some of the best shit I've ever played on. Now, we're writing in a different fashion. Buddha actually writes songs like uh, where he'll write the riff and the lyric all at the same time. And then we'll bring it to the band and we'll, we'll all learn it together and kind of like produce it or play it together. And so it's, a, it's working a lot better for us. Um, we're just becoming like a singer and I'm learning to sing more and Beatles more like our front man now, like screamer, more aggressive guy. I think when we come back now, it's going to be <laughs> it's gonna be professional as fuck. A lot of people are excited. You can you can tell. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. I'm really excited. Fucking wanna kick the face on stage. Metal, <laughs> drugs, cigarettes, blah. You know, like.
to all of you watching this documentary. Don't eat, thank God. Eat a dick up. <laughs> <laughs> you either like it or you don't. And I hope if you like it, you help support it, and we'll always be there to make music for you. Um, do you but, think? Oh yeah, yeah. Do you think that um, you guys have have an image? See? That's an answer. Good answer. <laughs> Good answer, dude. Yeah.